Hello and welcome to another Warcraft V audio commentary. We are back with game two of this WEL best of three matchup between HLA spawning in as the orange undead down in the lower left versing up against Ponyu.Wan spawning in as the teal undead in the upper right. Now this map is Death Road 1.2. You've seen it before once on the channel uh, and if you watched the Zotac livecast after show, I guess is what we'll call it, when we did a, when we did a couple of WEL games that day, uh, you saw it there as well. And there's actually a really good game played on W on this map between, I believe it was Yumiko and WFZ. So if you want to check those out, they're on the twitch.tv slash purebee live stream thing. And Fountain of Power, by the way, I'm pretty sure this is a health and mana regeneration. And we also found out that this map has some items, at least one item that's not in the regular game. It's called a flare gun or a flare or something like that. Basically, it's like a crystal ball, but you get three charges, and instead of giving you like the little crystal ball reveal, it gives you a basically a mortar team flare, which is actually kind of nice, and I liked it. I, or at least I like it. Um, I don't know if we're actually going to see it. There's some very interesting stuff, as well as, as what we found out that these bushes, these bushes work in a weird kind of way. Basically, they're line of sight blockers, kind of like the smoke in, the smokestacks in StarCraft 2, if you've seen those. So, they're interesting. I like them. They're actually on the map in a couple different key locations. For example, you have an expansion right here, and you have these guys right here. And so you could put towers up right here. You can mount a, a big a siege assault. They kind of act like the trees, sort of, except once you get once you put a unit into it, it basically, it gives you vision around it and I think I'm not sure if the unit has to actually get all the way into it I think it might just block buildings I think if a unit's on this side or that side you can see the units or you can see through it but buildings can't or something it's something like that I don't know it's something weird but I I do like the new mechanic right there or at least the new idea some people of course would say ah well some people would be wary of that and that's and that's reasonable but as an observer as a spectator I do like it. and you can kind of see like being used right here pony.win with that acolyte sitting there he's he's just waiting he's waiting to go in and there he is, yeah, he's going in, and HLA has no idea that he was coming in from that way. You can just see how, it, it's clever, I like it, I do like it, it's very interesting, and it provides a very interesting mechanic that's not really game-breaking in my opinion. It's something that's, I think, pretty, actually well-balanced for a map. I think it's in the realm of type of thing that maps should be able to do. I don't really feel like it changes core gameplay, it just, it's so it's nice. But anyway, we're just seeing this, um, basically this assault coming in from Wan. He's trying to kill these acolytes, trying to get these coils onto his skeletons. He did miss one right there, so he's seeing a couple of these skeletons slowly start to fall. And we're going to see, I don't know if any of these acolytes have died, but will this one go down? And might, there's an acolyte attacking it. No, he's going to get a coil, and he's going to stay just fine. HLA, of course, this time did get the Nubian Tower, uh, so this time he wasn't quite, it looks like maybe. Because last time I was talking about how he didn't get a Nubian Tower early. Um, but this time he did, and I so I that kind of leads me to believe that what I was saying was probably about right. He was probably expecting you know his opponent to play standard fiends on that map, which was last refuge 1.3, and it's a good map for standard fiends. It's a really good map, so it's not necessarily a wild assumption. But imagine that he had assumed on this map, which would have been probably a pretty big <laughs> bad idea because this is a huge map, and while and huge maps basically are completely up in the air when you have maps like this one where there's a lot of potential routes you could go, but that also just says, hey, when it looks appealing, sometimes people are going to go a stealing. <laughs> I don't, I don't think that's actually a saying, and it doesn't make a lot of sense. But basically what I'm saying is that it, you can deceive your opponent by saying, oh, this is the map that we're going to play on, and it looks like it's good for standard fiends, and then I'll play non-standard fiends. I don't know. It's basically it's metagame. It's all very complicated. I don't really understand. I don't think anybody really does. It's like rock, paper, scissors. You know there's people who can win those games versus, like, anybody. They're, like, freaking psychics i don't know man but this is this is going to be another attempt at from wan to come in here and kill these acolytes once again while hla is actually attacking and this time hla has a lot more fiends out and wan's brought one of fiends of his own and he's still trying to kill an acolyte now this is a pretty big prize because if you can kill an acolyte during a tech at this point he wouldn't cancel the tech but it would cost him you know a fair amount of gold also it's preventing him from creeping although he will pick up level two nonetheless from basically killing a lot of skeletons and he's killed quite a few um, and if you make sure that your Nerubians aren't the things that are getting the last hits on those skeletons, then it's an even bigger deal, because, you know, you went through, you know, uh, I think you went through five skeleton charges, and that's, um, 96 XP per, per rod, pretty much, so you go through two more, 
96, that's, uh, 96, I'm trying to do math. Basically, it's a lot, it's a lot. It's like, because they're 12 XP a skeleton, uh, four charges, five charges gives you 10 skeletons, so I guess it's 120 XP. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. And so yeah, it's nice, it's really, really useful. Now up here, this is an interesting creep that we're gonna be seeing right here. They basically have the skeleton marksman in the back, he has cold arrow, and there's a burning archer who has a fire arrow, searing arrow. And also, we're going to see this green camp ganging up right here. Now, these guys are special creeps on this map, because basically, when you kill them, they drop a rune of rebirth. What that means is you pick them up, and you get those units into your army for free. Well, I think you have to, there's a supply cost, but basically, it's for free. You know, you just you kill them, and you, you revive them. That fits so well with the undead theme and it's so thematic and on top of that they're undead units so I love it so you can cool these guys these are guys are this is a really important creep camp this literally gives you cold arrow it gives you cold arrow and searing arrow right off the bat because you can creep this so easily and it's just it's brilliant uh, it's it's kind of like a little naga it's not as powerful as naga I'm almost positive the slow it doesn't last as long as the nagas does I haven't seen the numbers, but it doesn't look like it does just from looking at it. Uh, I will look at those numbers at some point and try to tell you guys the next time I cast uh, a game on this match, on this map, which should be fairly soon because WL has a lot of games to go. And you can actually see, yeah, Pony One also going for these guys because you got to. They're so good, and 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 you don't you don't have to, right? You don't have to, but they're so good that you want to, and because they're not game breaking in my opinion. But they're good, and that I that's the kind of thing that people want to see, I think, or at least that I want to see when it comes to new maps. And that's this is kind of the thing. Like, this is a well-done map with some interesting mechanics, and it's all within the realm of uh, what I would consider acceptable. So, I mean, everyone, everyone's going to have their own opinion in that regard, though. Everyone will, and everyone should. So, we'll see if they can end up becoming um, maps that are used and accepted commonly by the community. And maps like this are going to be a harder sell because they do have a little bit more in the barriers where, you know, they're like, oh, well, we have line of sight blockers like this. Oh, well, we have rebirth runes. Oh, well, we have a custom item with the flare gun. Nothing that's extreme, and it doesn't really change the races. I think that's an important distinction where it doesn't change the actual uh, race racial balance, and that's really important. But again, you know, again, uh, that's what I think. So, uh, yeah, yeah, feel free to get, you know, if you want actually to give your comments and the opinion, give your opinion in the comments below. Um, that's a thing you're supposed to do on YouTube, promote comments, I guess. Um, so yeah, give your give your opinion on those little skeletons and then the, the, the thing below. And um, and I've been talking about that for a while. I just kind of realized. Just I, I love talking about new maps, though. I I feel like I could talk. I could have a talk show just dedicated to like talking and rambling about stuff. But that's not helping this game get cast. So let's go back into it. Now you can see Juan is sitting here with a death knight level three. His lich is level two. He's got a statue out and he's coming up with more fiends. You can go ahead and see that he is tier three. He's going with a crypt lord, in fact, this game. And he is also going with this double crypt build at tier three with the destroyers and that's I, I really I talked about this before but I do really like this I like this build the crit, double crit build because it kind of breaks up a lot of the monotony that we had seen in undead mirrors for a really long time because with this double crit build it actually lets you remax faster after a fight and it means basically that you can take more fights it means you have more mid game action it means these games don't always end up lasting like 45 minutes waiting for the gold mines to end out and waiting for someone to get ballsy to go take an expansion where we saw a lot of the times in fiend in fiend baron but now we don't see that now we're seeing this kind of this difference where we're seeing a much more high action paced game and i like it a lot so also we're going to see a bit of a deviance here it does look like hla is going to go for the dark ranger and i i wonder if these are actually line of sight blockers around the tavern so maybe if you had like a Moonwell, I wonder what that would do if you had a Moonwell sitting there. I'm not sure how that would work out. I'm actually interested, you know, because that would be kind of important. I don't think you should have a, I think as long as you have a, if you have a Moonwell there, I don't think you can build on those. I don't know. Uh, I guess we'll have to wait and see about that. I'll try to find that out as well before the next time around and we'll see if I can remember to. Um, but yeah, so down here you can see HLA, he is going to have level 3 on the Death Knight, level 2 on the Lich, and level 1 on the Dark Ranger. And, of course, he is also going with the infamous statues that you would expect. And over here we can see that, um, uh, what did, did, did they silence this? <laughs> they silence the skeleton minion. Okay. All right. And they have life drain. Okay. All right. Very interesting creep. Now, this definitely is a health mountain and a mana fountain, as you can see. You can tell by these sparkles, you see both yellow and blue. And that means, yeah, I'm fountain of power. I was pretty sure that's what it was. But that's what those are. Um... 
Very cool fountain. I do like these fountains, and I think these are perfectly acceptable on a map. Uh, because, why not? Especially with a very powerful creep camp here. Um, so yeah, there you go. You got all kinds of stuff. And you got silence and drain life. That's all interesting to see, and now we're actually going to see both players going for a fountain of power creep. I mean, what? how ridiculous is that? They have, like, shadow strike. They have drain life. This is a pretty hard camp. And that fiend went down to this creep, and I don't... Short of getting a coil on it, there was not a lot he could do. I mean, that was a lot of damage coming out. You have to be careful with these creeps. When it says Fountain of Power, it's not kidding. The creeps there are powerful. Very. And we can see, of course, there's a Bandit Lord. And both players, of course, are going to creep. And that's, you know, it's what it is. They're creeping out their map. Uh, I've got it. For some reason, I keep forgetting to turn off Flag of War when I turn it on. But over here, we can see. Let's see, is that level thing on the Lich? It is. That's odd. That is a weird choice to, to throw down that when you have a Fountain of Power right five feet away from you. Uh, but I guess timing is everything in this game. And he knows that his opponent's doing pretty much the same creep pattern as him. And there's that flare gun I was talking about. Again, it's not. I, I mean, if if this is a thing, I don't know about it. So I'm pretty sure it's a custom item. But I, oh well. And also a potion of Divinity. I guess that was from the Fountain of Power creep. I'm not sure what he got. He got a. I got a spike collar or a staff of silence. I don't, again. Uh, I think it must have been a spiked collar because I think the Staff of Silence is generally considered a different group. And he also has a flare gun. So you can see how that kind of is interesting. It gives you a bit of scouting information here and there. It also, of course, reveals invisible units. It's just like the Mortar Flare. And here we can see HLA finally getting his head into the game to go with the Double Crypt Fiend build as well. And Ponyu.Wan is sitting here. Apparently he's been building up a little bit. And we can see that he has two attack upgrades and zero armor upgrades, but he's getting his first armor upgrade right there. And here we can see that uh, I think that's the second. Yes, indeed. The second attack upgrade for HLA is currently being researched. Now that does put Ponyu that win slightly ahead in terms of research count and it looks like once the second attack upgrade finishes for HLA he's going to be about the same time that Wan's armor attack upgrade finishes so you, you know it'll we're, we're, we're going to see how that pans out but that will definitely put Wan at a bit of an advantage and over here we can see that HLA level 3 on his lich but again, that's a great item. The Potion of, D of Divinity. 25 seconds of, po of invulnerability is absolutely nuts. That is insane. And over here we can see that the Lich, for Potenu.Win, also level 3. So both players have the level 3, which I'm kind of curious to see. I'm kind of curious to see if we're going to start seeing more Crypt Lords with this build. But here comes this, this fight engagement. As you can see, it's starting. And we're going to see very nice silence right here on these guys, on these heroes. Of course, there are destroyers that to eat the silence, or at least right off the Lich, so you can get at least his, the uh, what's it called, Nova's off. And here comes a pretty nice impale, hitting three fiends. Going to allow a very good coil, or I'm sorry, a very good frost number. One of those fiends will go down, and Pony summons a spell, uh, a stalker, which has mana burn for 100. That's level 2 mana burn from the Demon Hunter. Very potent, as you can see, this basically, this Demon Hunter, or I'm sorry, this Death Knight, sitting down to one last coil, and he's going to go ahead and use that, and he's going to have to pop that potion of mana if he wants another coil. HLA has been dominated in this fight right here. Absolutely decimated by Pony.Win. And if we look at the food counts, we can see that Pony.Win is hitting at 59 food. As you can see, he did break food a little bit earlier than HLA did. And HLA is sitting down here at 48 food. So HLA is going to have to do something to fin this off. As you can see, he's up here. He's probably going to have to TP back. And he's, I don't know if he has, does he have a destroyer? He could really use a destroyer. He has one, yeah. So he can, he wants to, if he could, he would really be happy to eat the, uh, I can't find the spell, the spell stalker right there. The Fell Stalker, because it's just doing ridiculous amounts of damage with these mana burns, and you can dispel that. So, you know, but maybe he doesn't want to. Maybe he wants to, I don't know, he's going to nuke that down. Potion of Divinity being used on the Lich right here. As you can see, Pony.Win's Destroyer taking a lot of additional damage. But again, those are really nice upgrades for Win. 2-1 versus 2-0 for HLA. As you can see, both players going for the opposite Destroyers. While we're going to see another coil on HLA's Destroyer. Unfortunately, both of those Destroyers will go down. Level 3 being picked up by that Cryptoid. A very nice impel. Would have hit the Lich too, but the Lich was actually during, uh, currently in Divine Shield from that Divinity Potion. Oh, Win's Death Knight going to go ahead and get TP down at 39 life and ooh, HLA's Lich is in a lot of trouble the Lich goes down as Pony.Win TV's out unfortunately for Pony.Win we will see that uh, <laughs> one of the Crypt Fiends and an Abomination have been stuck in his base but it looks like that Crypt Fiend's actually going to make it out of here this Abomination however not going to be so lucky and that will be a very nice creep pickup for, or I'm sorry, level 3 pickup for HLA's Dark Ranger. And as you can see, Pony.Win, he's in a good shot, or a very good spot, in fact. And you can see he's sitting at 62 food. He's got all three of his heroes alive. HLA is sitting at 34 food, and he's missing a hero. A little unfortunate for him. He's going to go ahead and tavern that back for the Lich, bring him back up to speed. And now we're going to see 
Pony.win, so did that Fountain of Power, a great idea. A great idea, it's gonna give him full mana, full health on all of his units. Does it affect the uh, statues? I don't, I don't think so. Yeah, I know the regular ones don't, like the regular Fountain of Health and mana don't, but. Did not know if the Fountain of Power wouldn't, it definitely turns out it won't. Now we can see the Crippler, he's gonna come back just for a little bit more mana himself. He's like, I really, really like to have some mana, Fountain of Power. And the Fountain of Power is like, ah, uh, well, we could work something out. Just come closer. Come closer, Crypt Lord. Crypt Lord. <laughs> anyway, I'm not sure. I got, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, down here we can see that Pony.Win is at the shop selling a couple items. We'll pick up a Potion of Lesser Invernability for his Lich, which you want to do. It's very important. And it, this is not looking good for HLA because this is a fully manned up army for Undead, which has nice hero levels, nice army, nice supply counts. 3 1 attack upgrades. And one armor upgrade, so three attack upgrades, one armor upgrade. Sitting at 67 food, while HLA is sitting at 45 food. And this crypt can be sieged down without any kind of adverse effects from the Black Citadel or Nubian Tower or Spirit Tower. And it's a pretty good positioning as well. So as you can see, HLA unfortunately can't get into a good positioning unless he comes around this way. And if he comes around this way, then he has to take a fight where he doesn't have his undead base advantage. So very interesting map. This this kind of splitter right here is doing a lot of good work. You're going to see a wonderful impel there. Hitting three Crypt Fiends, the Death Knight, and the Dark Range. You're going to see a Dark uh, Silence onto HLA's Death Knight, where that's going to be that Staff of Silence doing work from Wynn's Death Knight. Of course, that's a Staff of Silence. I don't know. I kind of didn't finish that word there. HLA's Dark Ranger's in a lot of trouble as well. He's going to go down. There's not a lot that can be done right now. It looks like for HLA, he's simply being overwhelmed by units. He's going to need a miracle to win this game. And he is going to go ahead and call a good game. Realizing there is not a lot of hope for him there. And there really wasn't. But that's game two of the WEL best of three match from these two players. And there is one more game that means in the series which we'll get to as soon as possible. If you missed game one, you can always click uh, right here. There's an annotation, should, or there should be. Uh, well, it'll take you back to the first game. And uh, over here, there should be another annotation that should take you to the next game as soon as that is up. It won't be there until it's up, but and I don't know if I'm going to get it up today, but I'm going to try. And so that's the way that works. And so, yeah, I got, uh, guys, I hope that you enjoyed watching. Thank you for watching is what I meant to say. There. I'm not sure why, but I do hope you enjoyed it. And that's that's that. So, yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye. And again, not the bye. I don't. It keeps coming out. It's just, it's my good manners. That's, that's all. That's all it is. It's my good manners.